Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to part two of taking my Shopify dropshipping store from zero to one thousand dollars a day. Now, if you guys already haven't watched part one, definitely highly recommend suggest it to do so. I will leave a link right there on the top right, whether you're on mobile, desktop, iPad, doesn't really matter. Definitely check that video out. You know, that's kind of basically me starting this series so you guys can stay updated. But in this video, as promised, I'm bringing you guys with a part two of taking a brand new Shopify store with a fresh ad account, fresh pixel from zero to a thousand dollars a day. So again, definitely check that video guys. So you guys are up to par. Before we do jump right into it, guys, please do join my free Facebook group, Ecom Masterminds. I will be leaving a link to that in the description below with all my other social media accounts as well. And last but not least, guys, please do drop a huge like on this video. I would really, really appreciate it if you guys do so, so this video can reach as many people as possible. I do want to really serve and bring value and information and knowledge to as many people in the e-commerce dropshipping space. And also, last but not least, please do subscribe to the channel and join the family and turn on that post notification bell. So guys, to keep this vi video very raw, very short, very to the point, let's jump straight into it. This is part two of scaling my brand new Shopify dropshipping for store from zero to $8,000 a day. So first and foremost, guys, we are right now on my Shopify dashboard. Um, today is the fifth day running this particular store and we did over um, $366 in sales more than likely, um, right now it is 10.34 New York City time. Uh, I'm pretty sure by 3 a.m. Uh, my time, we will reach $400 in sales. So that is the goal, fingers crossed. I say 3 a.m. Uh, because my Facebook business manager is basically in California time and Pacific time. Um, so, you know, we still have about four and a half hours. So I'm pretty confident we should be reaching uh, $400 in sales and yes, we are profitable today. I'll be going into my Facebook ads manager kind of taking you guys up to date from my last part one and also kind of going on to current uh, courses of actions as well. So today as you can see um, the conversion rates 8.33 percent. I believe when I woke up around like uh, 8 or 9 a.m. I already had seven sales 13% conversion rate over the day. It did go a little bit down, which is normal, but it's still, you know, above the industry, you know, 31 out to cards 24 uh, checkouts initiated and 16 conversions in total. Now I do have abandoned cart email sequences running and also SMS marketing running. You guys should definitely, definitely have that to kind of reel that back end revenue in as well in case someone doesn't make that purchase that first instance they're presented with the ad. You know, your back end should definitely be again solidified to really maximize that revenue overall on your store. So that's just a little FYI. That's just a little note. You guys should definitely be having those email marketing and text message marketing systems into place. So just for this week, guys, first day we did about 119, second day we did about 159, uh, third day again we were going up, 305, almost double. The fourth day we did jump to 115 and we were unprofitable. And then today we'll more than likely reach over $400 in sales. And I will explain kind of why this happened, right? You guys gotta understand in dropshipping, especially when you're testing a new product, Patience is very, very important. You will come across unprofitable days, right? More than likely, I'll, again, I'll explain why this happened, but again, Facebook has its days. At the end of the day, it's machine learning, it's doing its thing, and potentially it's still finding your actual customer, right? It takes a while when you're still kind of in that cold audience phase until you move into those warm and hotter audiences. You'll see that we're still in my cold audiences phase right now. Um, you know, we would be kind of testing lookalikes and custom audiences if it wasn't for this day, but now the next step we will be. So more than likely part three, you will be basically seeing this store reach a thousand dollars in sales. And yes, we will be profitable. Okay. So I will explain to uh, kind of this dip in just a little bit to you why that happened, kind of what I did and kind of how we bounce back up. Okay. So again, this is a one product store, which is a store built around one product. And I also have uh, about two upsells as well, which uh, two in every 10 people are actually opting in for those upsells. So, you know, you definitely want to get that AOV, that average order value as high as possible. So just kind of to give you that little background. Now let's go into my Facebook ads manager. Well, things will actually make a little bit more sense to you guys. So, um, Again, so this is my first campaign. Okay, this is kind of the campaign that you guys saw in that part one. Now, I'm not going to explain everything again because you guys should definitely check that video out. But this is basically what I was showing you guys from the 21st to 23rd, right? This is uh, basically kind of where I, uh, you know, made 
um, excuse me, part one. So what happened was, you know, I let the, this campaign specifically run for about two and a half days. Okay, that's kind of what I prefer. It was running at $100 a day. And I always like to analyze my ads in days of two or three, especially when I'm cold interest targeting. When I'm more aggressively scaling, then, you know, we can definitely analyze and aggressively kill a little bit more, maybe 24 to 36 hour span time. So, um, you know, what I basically did here was I had about uh, 10 campaigns and what I basically did is um, I definitely turned one, two, three off after the second day and I gave one, two, three, the ones that say 24 hours, I gave them a little bit more time to catch up, okay? I usually spend a certain ad set, I meant, not campaign, at least spend 15 to 20 dollars before I make a decision. So in this case, like, you know, they were spending more than 15, 20 bucks and they were kind of like breaking even, kind of unprofitable, but they were, they like still had one or two more sales, you know, or like at least one or two more sales, I would say. So I basically let them run for 24 hours. Again, the ROAS was just not killing. I believe my ROAS to break even for this product is about like a 1.8 to one, or about a 1.7 to 1.8 which is again, very, very important to know your ROAS. Um, again, that didn't go up. So I basically shut these off. I gave them 24 hours. You know, I keep everything very organized. As you can scale up, um, you know, those two days, what I basically did was I let these campaigns run and, you know, they were bringing me good ROAS. They still are. That's why they're still on up to this date. What I did after guys was I basically put these four campaigns into a brand new CBO campaign, okay? That's what I did and you'll see right here. And let's go to ad sets. And so again, um, one, two, uh, three, and four, I put into new CBO campaign. This instantaneously I turned off after a day because it was just spending a shit ton of money. Like, yeah, I got three sales, but again, it wasn't meeting that break even point ROAS, okay? Um, so I instantaneously turned that off and on top of that I also added three more ad sets that day as well three new ad sets I always like to horizontally scale as well not only vertically scale you know maybe test other ad sets out there similar and alike to the ones that are already working so that's basically what I did okay so then last night I saw that um, you know one two three four were kind of bringing me a break-even ROAS okay and again it did not spend 15 bucks so this did not spend 15 bucks um, this did not um, this spent less than 15 bucks and it gave me a ROAS of 322 and 420 so I basically kept that on um, this again great ROAS and this again it spent very 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 less money you know as for the 21st to the 23rd so that's basically what I did. Okay, kind of that was my strategy. Now this will all kind of transition into the twenty, the um, twenty third to twenty fifth. I do believe it's the twenty fifth today. If I'm not going crazy, yes. Right. So we will come back to this campaign in just a little bit. So you know, initially I was going into lookalikes, and you know, I really kind of didn't because I had that really low day the day before today. So I was like you know, let me cut back on ad sets, right? That's kind of what I did. I gave certain 24 hours and I also kind of cut back some ad sets as, as well, you know? Again, you know, there were some ad sets that were spending a shit ton of money and was just not bringing me the proper ROAS. You know, Facebook kept dumping money into those ad sets. So sometimes you really have to be patient and kind of cut down. I didn't increase or decrease my budget or anything, kept my budget the same. And voila, you know, today we're probably going to be breaking $400 in sales and we are going to, you know, be profitable. So again, um, these I gave uh, 24 hours, like I said, I instantaneously turned them off from the 23rd to 25th. So this has basically spent uh, 10 bucks. I usually like to spend, like have it to spend 15 bucks. So I will not make a decision for this just yet. For this, I will most likely turn this off, okay, even though... It has given me eight purchases in the, in the last two or three days. The ROAS is not good. And this has spent about 31, about 32 bucks, and it's still having a shitty ROAS. So I will probably turn this off, okay? And Forever 21, it's still spent only 528 in this specific campaign. So I will still let it run, but it's not, again, still spent 15 to 20 bucks. So that is the first campaign from the 23rd to 25th, okay? And I'm going to basically transition as to what I was talking about before into kind of the 23rd to 25th. Okay. This campaign seems 
to be doing better right now. So again, this one, you know how we said 24 hours, I'm probably going to delete that 24 hours and let it run because again, it's bringing us a great ROAS. This one, I'm going to turn off later tonight about one, about 2 to 3 a.m. Because again, it's spent 20 bucks. It really hasn't, you know, having us really break even. This, it's giving us 24 hours. I will still give it another 24 hours because it, it is almost reaching its break even point ROAS. Um, this, I gave it 24 hours. It's, it's gotten us eight purchases over in you know the last two to three days so again uh, this is profitable I will leave I will remove this 24 hours um, exercise equipment it's just kind of breaking even spent only 10 bucks so again I will leave it on and this ad set specifically has only spent six bucks and has gotten us a more of a high ROAS so I will leave this one all um, this one on as well what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna be raising the budget to this campaign to 150 bucks okay to so the other campaign the first one excuse me I'm probably gonna be leaving at a hundred bucks even what I usually like to see okay what I usually like to see is an ad set giving consistent results for three days straight okay you don't want any lucky sales or anything like that so let's go to the 23rd for example okay this is another way you can horizontally scale so you can see on the 23rd itself, okay, one, two, three, great ROAS, okay, forever Pilates and exercise equipment, great ROAS, okay, we are very much profitable. 24th, let's look at those three again, again, very profitable, um, forever, um, even Febletics, but you know, forget about that, Pilates. Exercise equipment, nothing, and then Joseph Pilates, it has given us a 17 or 18 for OS almost. And then 25th. So again, you want to see which assets are bringing consistent, uh, a consistent positive ROAS. Um, again, forever, it's basically almost profitable. Uh, Pilates, almost profitable as well. So what I'm going to be most likely doing is putting... Pilates and Forever 21 into a new CBO campaign and I'm going to be basically duplicating each ad set twice. So we will have two Forever 21s and two Pilates into a CBO campaign at $100 a day. So that is what I am going to be basically be doing and I'm also going to be basically applying the changes slash keeping some of these on like I explained before, um, you know, the ones that are consistent and keep these running as well, okay? That's kind of basically what I'm going to be doing. Um, as you can see, the overall ROAS is almost at break even point for this specific um, campaign just for today. And then the last three days. Um, again, it is just break even. And this basically happened because of that day yesterday. Yesterday did set us back, but today we have enough data to make a decision to really deduce as to what to do okay so I also have now I believe if we go back to let's just go back to the campaign level really quick guys so what I'm gonna do besides you know mess around and duplicate and kill uh, you know and scale these cold interest audiences total we have about uh, I'm looking for video plays guys. So we have over a hundred thousand video plays. I video plays. I usually look for seventy-five to hundred thousand video plays to get into a uh, retargeting for video watcher. So tonight I will set up fifty percent and seventy-five percent and ninety-five percent lookalike audiences. Okay. Sometimes I will only do fifty and seventy-five. See how those perform. If those perform well, I will do ninety-five percent lookalikes the next day and also ten-second lookalikes the next day. Okay. So everyone who has watched fifty percent of my videos, 75% of my videos, 95% of my videos, and 10 seconds of my videos. And more than likely, I will also do a website visitors and cut and view content, um, you know, custom audience as well. Meaning basically everyone who has watched my website, uh, who has visited my website, but who has not made any other action on my website besides that. Okay? In terms of the video watchers, um, I basically always exclude purchase. Basically, for almost any custom audience, you know, besides a purchase custom audience or purchase lookalikes, I always exclude purchase because you want to basically exclude those type of people or those specific people, okay? So that's what I'm going to be basically launching tonight. And yes, this will be running. 
um, this will be running. I'm also going to be running a third CBO more than likely. Um, and then also I'm going to be running two to three campaigns in terms of lookalikes as the ones I mentioned as well. So, you know, we're kind of going to be really going full on scale um, over the next one to three days. And hopefully we'll be able to reach a thousand dollars in sales. Again, I couldn't really deduce so much from yesterday because of kind of what just happened. Um, you know, in terms of the day yesterday. Um, again, you can see that Facebook doesn't always uh, recognize all sales. It says $988 here, uh, but in, realistically, you know, we've made um, $1,067, hopefully $1,100 by today at uh, 3 a.m. my time, okay? So for next video, I'm actually be gonna be going into a little bit deeper and kind of really explaining to everything as a collaborative effort as to what I did and how I reached to that $1,000 a day with this specific product in about a week or so of time's worth, I would say. Okay, I would definitely get there quicker. Um, the other thing I kind of do recommend is always making changes to your funnel. You know, how can you better optimize your actual landing page? You know, I made a few changes from yesterday to today on my landing page, and I, I changed up the trust badges, I added more reviews. Um, I added a little bit to the description and just make that that process from your landing page into your enter, in, entire funnel as guided and as trustworthy and as comfortable as possible for a potential customer. So you always, always have to be able to adapt and pivot, you know, kind of brainstorm and use your intuition, your logic and take these feedback points and be like, hey, you know, I'm having a lot of add to carts, but I'm not having a lot of initiate checkouts or I'm having a lot of add to carts. A lot of initiate checkouts, but not a ton of conversions. So kind of what's going on in my funnel? You know, what can I change? Is it optimized for only desktop? Is it optimized for mobile and desktop? Um, you know, are there a lot of distractions? Are there a lot of pop-ups? What's going on that are preventing people from good, getting to point A to C or A to B or B to C? You know, can just kind of reverse engineering that wherever your missing leak is within kind of that conversion funnel, basically. So that's also, also what I do really recommend. Um, and again, I think Facebook will definitely perform better now it's gotten more consistent. We're also going to look like audiences as well. So, you know, we will be scaling again a little bit more aggressively in the coming two to three days. So definitely look forward to that, guys. I know this video was a little bit shorter, but again, it was primarily due to that setback yesterday. So I really kind of couldn't, you know, accordingly make everything as planned that I had with this door. And again, I'm using this door as informational purposes, and who knows, maybe I'll even, you know, make it into something bigger and better. But I really kind of just want to show you that what's possible, but kind of how my strategy really is, okay? So again, I'm going to stop talking, guys. If you have any comments, any thoughts, any concerns, please do drop them below. I always reply to everyone all the time. I want to make sure I give you guys the most insight and value as possible and again guys please do leave a huge like on this video if you did enjoy this and definitely look forward to part three as soon as the next few days thank you guys so much and i'll talk to you soon peace